The Brenda Perryman Show is brought to you by Livingston Family Dentistry. Livingston Family Dentistry knows that good dental care ensures overall wellness, and healthy teeth and gums can perfect your smile. With over 30 years of experience, Dr. Ronald and Dr. Blake Livingston take the time to explain every treatment. Their modern office and friendly staff are committed to making you feel comfortable, informed, and satisfied. Located at 13724 Woodward in Highland Park, call now, 313-883-3050. If your teeth are not becoming to you, then you should be coming to us. Good morning, good morning, and welcome to Table Talk with Brenda Perryman right here on WHPR. And I'm going to let two of my co-hosts introduce themselves, and then I'm going to do On This Day, and then we're going to go to a quick break and let my third co-host come on up here. And we have a lot to talk to you about, a lot. We may even talk about the pension since we were back here talking about it. And it, this can affect me you, everybody, everybody. Well, maybe not you. Lawyers are independently wealthy. No, but anyway, um, on this day, and this is from Ken Coleman, WJLB's 1400 Frantic Ernie Durham offers his top 10 list of hits as published by the Detroit Free Press. I have a, a well, number one was I'm Losing You by The Temptation. I'm losing you. You remember that, everybody. Stand by me by Spider Turner. He had a different arrangement than um, Benny King. Whispers by Jackie Wilson. Whispers getting louder. Do you guys know anything about that? Mm. Oh, you all as much as you. <laughs> Aaron, Aaron Neville, tell, us, tell it like it is. Jimmy Ruffin, I passed this way before, but I remember in six in um, 66 also, What Becomes of the Broken Hearted, that came out. And then Karate by the Emperors. I don't know that one, so I can't sing it. I'm Gonna Make You Love Me by Dee Dee Warwick. And the thing about that is it was remade by the Temptations and Supremes. I'm gonna make you love me. Oh, that was my jam jam. And, and I know young people. Have you all heard those songs? Which one? Of course. I'm Last gonna one. make you love me. No. Golly, yes, Robert. Uh, Diana Ross, the Supremes. With the I don't Temptation. remember the Temptations, but I do remember the uh, uh, Diana no. Ross singing lead. My love is strong, you see, you know you never get I heard tired of me. Oh, y'all yeah. yeah, are, God, they're too young, guys. Um, and then they have some other ones that I do not know how to sing, unfortunately. But I'm sure some of you can reminisce and know Frantic Ernie Durham came on every day. They called him Frantic, I suppose, because he was so exciting. But he talked all day, just like I do sometimes. But we're going to go to a quick break, and Daron will be up here, and then we're going to talk table talk. Livingston Family Dentistry knows that good dental care ensures overall wellness and healthy teeth and gums can perfect your smile. With over 30 years of experience, Dr. Ronald and Dr. Blake Livingston take the time to explain every treatment. Their modern office and friendly staff are committed to making you feel comfortable, informed, and satisfied. Located at 13724 Woodward in Highland Park, call now 313-883-3050. If your teeth are not becoming to you, then you should be coming to us. an aka all right we're on we're back and Daron, introduce yourself Daron buffington uh business development manager for vna visitor nurses associate visitor nurses association i'm sorry okay uh, well welcome i'm glad you're here and we were talking off we, air we need to introduce ourselves either. 
Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. Robert. We know their own is special, though. <laughs> <laughs> we, well, he has um, purple. The cur purple is the color of the day. I will start with Darnell, since you're so smart. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. My name is Darnell McLaurin. I'm a public servant as well as a union director and a Highland Park alumni. Uh, and good morning. My name is Robert Thomas. I'm the current vice chairman of the Board of Zoning Appeals for the city of Detroit. Okay. We were talking off air about the pension situation. And as you know, the Republicans were trying to do some things as far as pensions are concerned. Um, Darnell, since you're a public servant, would you tell us a little about it? Sure. Um, so you know that the city went through a bankruptcy, and through that bankruptcy, Public Act 436 was passed which gave uh, Kevin or complete autonomy to do what he wants. Now, the pensions were supposed to be uh, constitutionally protected. Kevin Orr's sentiments was that the Constitution was a contract and contracts were meant to be broken. So they did change the way our contract, I mean, the way our pension was structured. In fact, it went from a defined benefit plan to a defined, to a defined contribution plan. So now what you have in lame duck session is the, the misnomer is that Municipalities are broken by public uh, workers, uh, teachers, uh, and so on and so forth. But we know that's not true. Industries that leave municipalities leave cities in financial And lowers, lower the tax base. E exactly. And so that's essentially what happened with uh, Highland Park, for example, uh, Detroit. Once the uh, industry that everybody worked for leaves, you leave a financial burden. Well, on you that know, Highland Park had Chrysler. Chrysler yeah. left. And, and yeah, here you go. And I, I will say that, um, um, unlike Kevin Orr, I don't believe that um, contracts are, I mean, uh, contracts yes. should be li are, are, are equal to the, the Constitution. Certainly. Now, what you can do is amend the Constitution, uh, Michigan State Constitution, with the state legislators. Um, and that's what they tried to do during this lane up section, uh, session. But uh, pre prior to this, they tried to attack the Detroit pensioners mm -hmm. but now it's state this statewide and they're not gonna get away with that I don't think uh, they couldn't do it during a uh, through a laying duck session and they're not gonna do it through a, um, a regular session either I, but I a lot of people knew that these legislators felt like this and they voted for yeah. them they vote against their own interests constant, yeah. Yeah. Uh, constantly yes. I, I think it's a problem also that you have people that are up in Lansing that are doing this and they know that their constituents don't want them to do this but are doing it anyway. So do they have the public's best interest at heart or are they working for uh, industry? And well, I think one of the smartest moves they can do is all of the, the unionized um, um, organizations in this state need to get together and, and oppose a lot of these uh, uh, um, um, topics that's coming up within the state legislature. Right. Uh, well, it's the only way they can get this stuff, just knock this stuff down. Um, other than that, I, you can't do it one by one. They seem, they're trying to single people out. It was the teachers' mm -hmm. union. It was the uh, police and fire. You, you have to, you have to um, collaborate over um, competition. So. Right, and it's been, a, it's, you know, it's been an attack, you know, that's been coming from all angles. Mm -hmm. You know, recently the uh, governor, uh, two-term governor, mm -hmm. that, that speaks volumes, right? Mm -hmm. And so uh, he made Michigan a, a right-to-work state, yeah. but he left uh, public safety out of that mm -hmm. equation. But even though people voted against that. Didn't they? Of course. Uh, we we voted against the uh, Public Act 436, but he brought it back, added appropriations to it, so you couldn't put it back on the ballot for a referendum vote. So, Which is illegal. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But it was, it was done. Yeah, it, it was done. Legalized gangsterism is what I call it. <laughs> um, it, 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 just, it just puzzles me. Um, when, when you look at what they're trying to do up there, it, it really makes no sense. Well, uh, for the common people, mm -hmm. for... Uh, other vested interests, yes, it, it makes a lot of sense. But they're supposed to be representatives of the people, and they're not doing the people's will. So I have a big problem with that. So what's going on? I just want to say this. Somebody's weak because these people, maybe it's our unions, maybe, I mean, what is it that keeps these people in office? What keeps them in office is the sentiment of one particular state representative. I don't have a pension, why should you? Right? And so there's thousands of people who believe that. Well, I know someone who worked at Chrysler, salary, big money, and Chrysler just stopped paying in on the pensions and wouldn't let him, so he just quit. Well, yeah. and another thing, I believe they stopped the pensions with, uh, um, 
with the state legislators when they eradicated uh, the when they when they went to term limits. Mm-hmm. Um, before that, they were receiving uh, health benefits and stuff like that, but they well, only serving there for six mistaken. to eight years. Right. I mean, they, there's no. It's an unfair comparison. They can't say that. Hey. Uh, I, c- I can't compare my six to eight year record to your twenty plus year record. And they weren't necessarily true. talking about the, uh, the the legislation body. They were speaking of the individuals who left their private life to become well, a, a, a servant a, to a the people, yeah. right? But when he's uh, leave office, he's got to go back to running his business, mm-hmm. and in his business, he doesn't have a pension. Is yeah. what he's saying. Yeah. But then again, that's a choice. Exactly. And if you look at what they're doing now, I know uh, Robert said that you know. Um, they should come together, but the legislation they're introducing now, they're trying to make it illegal for you to pick it, for you to strike, and yeah. to charge you, and things of that sort. So exactly. they're, they're ahead of the game to make sure that you know the unions don't come together, and if they do come together, that they don't have any power. Exactly. Well, I call it one word, and people need to think about it, that one word is oppression. Mm-hmm. This is modern-day mm-hmm. oppression. Honestly, it is. It seems like attack, an attack on the working man or woman. It used to be very noble to be a teacher and to, you know, help people realize their futures. Now it's like, I can't do that. You know, well, the whole world is changing. I realize that. But yeah. it, Kevin Orr said it. The days of graduating high school and getting a good job with a nice pension are over. But it wasn't Kevin Orr. It was... It was Folks said that before even he came into um, the Detroit area. He reiterated it, yeah. Robert. Yeah, yeah. Well, I understand that, but it was it was said that way before then. Uh, and, and I mean, it's, it's holding to be true. Um, you can't yeah. really do much without uh, um, that educational. Well, education. I want to quickly get to the first topic, and that is that the pastors and Sam Riddle have um, urged black people to avoid East Point. What do you think? You remember when East Point used to be East Detroit? Yes, I do. And so they changed it to East Point to tell people we don't want to be associated with Detroit. Right, so that, that's true. You know, that true. spoke volumes. You know, um, they they've had some people arrested and kicked and and so forth there. But I'm just wondering, is I mean, I never go to East Point, but I guess people. I do actually. Do, you do. I do. In that Hummer. <laughs> no, I got rid of it. Yeah. Oh, you got rid of it. Yes, I, I do. I do go to East Point, um, but just like East Point or in Detroit, and Bloomfield Hills or wherever I may be, I act like I got some sense. Yeah, it's gonna be kind of difficult for um, um, for that message to resonate within the community. Don't go to East Point. You have twenty five percent of uh, um, East Pointers are probably with African American descent. Um, or, or other, at least, well, I think it's 25 <laughs> percent, <laughs> but um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be hard to do. What are you going to do? Tell those guys, hey, don't go home. Um, yeah. and, and, and people who, who live in an area that's cousins or relatives, they can't go there either. Um, and, and it all sparked over um, uh, an individual being arrested for a, a, drunk, alleged, drunk. Uh, allegedly for drunk driving, and he was, you know, accosted by the cops. And he said he was beaten uh, allegedly uh, by the by the police officers of East Point, and um, he wants some type of uh, um, um, due process to be served. Um, and now these pastors are coming out currently, and along with Sam Riddle, um, saying, "Hey, let's boycott this area." Um, but well, it's other ways to attack it. There are other mm-hmm. ways to attack yeah. that. That's what I'm saying. I was wondering what my audience and, felt and, about and that. And another way to attack it is another uh, initiative that's out there is the fact that I believe that I think it was, was it changed from East Point on East Detroit to East Point maybe in the was it 70s or 60s or something? No, no that no, just that recently. Long. It was it that long. But I believe, just a few years ago. I believe the federal government wanted them to break off uh, East Point into districts, uh, which – will give uh, African-Americans uh, representative on their city council. So that may, may be another way to attack that issue is um, having African-Americans in power in East Point um, so you can hold uh, um, officers accountable and the chief of police accountable for a lot of these actions that are. But when you're saying boycott, you're talking boycott, boycott uh, financially. So that has nothing to do with them going home or anything like that. It's about the power of the dollar. So why spend your dollar? there if if whether you live there or whether you don't live there if you're not being treated fairly. Well you guys are pretty young but there were some people who um, 
at some times, like Oak Park, I'll just use that as a, for instance, in the 70s and early 80s, there were a lot of people who hated to come across Oak, um, Eight Mile. Eight Mile, because the Oak Park police may stop them. It seemed like they were looking for these people. I was one of them. I, I hated <laughs> to come across it. I, and, and um yeah and then if they stop you i remember getting stopped one night and um i they look at your address and see that you may live there then they let you go mm -hmm. it's like they didn't want other people to we have a call good That's morning totally good morning good morning hi hi how you doing fine uh you are talking about east point this morning yes, yes. Well, it's so many blacks out there in East Point now until I tell you. I go through there. I go through there headed uh, headed somewhere else. Yeah. It is so many blacks out there. Yeah. They got a black barber shop. They got a beauty shop. I mean, a beauty supply store. The, the high school out there, a lot of the kids that used to go to Detroit Public School, they send them out there. Mm -hmm. East Point is swapped with blacks. Yeah. So I think they are, you know, I think they're a little late. To say that, you know, to tell blacks to stay from there because there's so many of them out there, out there living. I agree with you. I agree with you. I don't think that avoiding East Point, I'm not going to avoid anywhere personally. My, you know, my concern is more about the particular case. Right. Um, the individual who was stopped for drunk driving um, had a uh, eye injury that was irreparable based on, they said it was a lag time in getting uh, some medical attention. But aren't isn't there video footage in the police station? Don't they video? Uh, I thought they did. Areas? And in the, on the cars. And, and that's where they, exactly that's what they were showing on television was the fact that it was probably about six or seven officers um, just attacking this guy um, allegedly. Now I'm not sure what they were doing because they had the backs covered mm -hmm. towards uh, the cameras, and I'm, I'm pretty sure they knew where the cameras were, um, but. They were uh, attacking a guy, and that's how he sustained the eye injury, amongst other injuries. Right. But but in the police report, their police report said that the guy was slamming his own head against yeah, the bench. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so yeah. the video should support that as well, if yeah. that police right. report is correct. Yeah. So mm -hmm. they're trying to say that they were stopping him. It took six or seven, and, and they couldn't stop him. Right. They say he was. Yeah. They say he actually sprayed wind. Uh, Windex he drank inside. Windex, yeah. or he sprayed Windex. It's like, yeah. how do you get a hold of Windex yeah. in jail? Usually, yeah. if, you, if if you're in the if you're in the jail, uh, unfortunately, I know this. Um, <laughs> 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 they have you handcuffed. So where did he get Windex your from? Are, are, are behind Windex. your back. Oh. So yeah. how would you be able to grab Windex? Um, right. Unless someone did something technically wrong. Yeah. Right. How would you be able to grab Windex and spray it? And why would you have Windex out where? Uh, exactly. Uh, how is it accessible? Yeah. So it's a lot of holes in the story. So I think they should explore that a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. I, I think they should explore it too. We have another call. Good morning. Good, good morning. Hi. Yes. You, uh, you were talking about pensions. And what what is, I'm smiling because I'm, I'm collecting mine. And I, I worked in an industry that uh, uh, celebrated their 100-year uh, anniversary of, of origin, okay? And I spent 40 years with them. So prior to what pensions, what most municipal employees were civil servants. They didn't have a pension, but you had a job for life. But, when, when, uh, that, and, but you could not grow with that. So in unions came in. Even early on unions didn't have pensions. I'm talking construction area, and even in the um, uh, auto industry, they thought to get get some pensions. You know, you'd work 40 years and you'd have a pension. So you and you'd have negotiating contracts. Well, one of the things that governments did is that it was insured by the federal government. They call it ERISA, I think it is. Okay, well, then they stopped putting the money in there. So it became, as the population grew, and you had more people employed, and you had this idea that, it's just like Social Security, that the younger people would pay for the older people. If you get my, my gist, the new employees were paid. They were constantly turning over and putting more money in. You weren't expected to collect your pension until 65, and just like social, or 62, and they expect you to die anyway, so you wouldn't get the money that you put in. 
the pensions were separate from Social Security. So it, it became unmanageable for municipalities when industry supplied, they, 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 the labor force shifted. So the money's not going in there. And the government said, we, can't, we cannot insure all of these pensions throughout the country. So they passed the rule, they said, listen, your pension has to be funded by you as you collect it. But if the municipalities don't collect the pensions and don't invest it in, 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 in federal governments or whatever they invested it in, and it doesn't mature, the money's not there. So this hold, hold, hold. Pre- oh. you understand what I'm saying? What the Republicans yeah. are doing is they're, they're getting away from their responsibility to the people that uh, pensions, and they, they used uh, a glitch in the, in the thing. They said, we don't have the money, so we just avoid the contract. Do you understand where I'm, I'm, I'm getting at? Yes, I, I, I do understand what you're saying, but but just for an example, the, the city of Detroit's police and fire pension is, is funded by its members. Those members do not receive Social Security. You're right. And, and they... The money has to be, the, the government said the money has to be there. In other words, what was the guy, the, the baseball player, uh, won 40 games in Detroit, and he stole all the money from, uh, he, he, he took that money Denny and he Plank. took it from the pension fund Denny of, a, of a community. Yeah. Now, after it's gone, it's just gone. You can't reproduce 40 years or, or 60 years of money. Right, and, and that's understandable in that particular situation. But we talk about public safety workers' pensions, where they pay into that pension system. Yes, and, and that system is just like you said: the younger employees pay for the older employees or the retired employees. That system, the way it's funded, is by members paying into it. What the uh, Public Act four thirty six did, or Kevin Orr did, is they closed that pension system. So that pension system is solely based on the investments and earnings of that pension system. There's still no outside funding source. Now they have a defined contribution plan, which is solely funded by the members that pay into that pension system. Okay. I, I thank you. Saying, thank you. Thank, sir, I, sir, we had moved to the next topic. We just, I'm sorry. Okay. I thank you for that insight, though. I do. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Uh, wow, this is such a such a topic, you know. Well, it the, affects a lot of Detroiters uh, and it and affects Michiganders. Michiganders. Yeah. Come on, include yeah. me. Yeah. Their money I mean, and their future. That's, but the whole, but here's the whole thing. You know, everybody didn't save up a big nest egg of five hundred thousand and stuff on the side. People have to live on that pension. Yeah, and you know, you have some politicians that don't care. They would rather want you to uh, go out there and invest in four hundred one k's versus uh, guaranteed yeah, you know, but retirement plans. Uh, like yeah, I I can understand that, but you got to gradually take people over to that. You just can't say do it now. You have to gradually just take people over to doing that. And I think they, they were trying to gradually do it, um, but you know, there is a there is a. There was there was a backlash when it came to uh, trying well, politicians trying to say, hey, we're going to go over try to move over to a 401k system versus this pension system because it's going to break the state, uh, or it's not going to break the state, but they don't want to shuck uh, shuck the money out to guarantee that these pensioners going to get paid. Um, but yeah, that's uh, it's, it's 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 really crazy. Um, I hate it. I don't. You know, when I hear things like that, my whole thing is five letters: rebel. R E B E L. Why can't we rebel or get together and do that? I just I don't understand people who just lay down for stuff. I I just I, 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 I'm not saying you all. No, 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 no. no I, I think they have to do a better job. Number one, of making each individual understand why this affects you. People don't get behind programs that they don't see a benefit for themselves. So you have to you have to make it plain to them how this is going to affect you, how it's going to hurt you, how it's going to hurt your children and your children's children. And once you bring it like that, then people can relate to it and they can they can understand it. But right now, 
what, what's happening is one side is telling you this is good for you, and other side is telling you this is bad for you, but they're not telling you why it's bad for you, how it's going to affect you, and how it's going to affect your family. And you have to also include the younger folks that's not receiving a pension, but you got to let them understand, hey, this is what's happening to Absolutely. Uh, it's the pension is currently. It's they about can do communication, and it's about the people who are elected. I tell you. I'm about. I want to take so many of the Democrats out that office anyway. I just. I. I it needs to happen. Uh huh. It's a topic, but it's, it needs to happen. Right. Right. I think so. I and we're going to get into that uh, in a minute. But this white high school. I'm sure some of you saw that um, when the blacks were introduced on the base on the basketball team, they held up Trump signs and turned their backs. Do you think that this is indicative? of what's going to happen. I think race relations are at a bad point, probably a worse point in your lifetime than Very mine. Very bad. Yes. Very bad. I think they, in the state of Michigan, they've had more incidents reported in high school and in college than anywhere else in regards to racial tension and, and things that have taken place after Trump. Um, it's, it's getting bad, and no one is addressing it. You know, everybody just pushes it off. Oh, here and there, oh, that was just kids. You know, when you when you look at Royal Oak and finding a noose right. and right. kids chanting in, in, in the um, And the kids room. are saying what their parents are saying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's learned behavior. And it's dangerous behavior, too. Uh, they hold the kids in these urban cores responsible when it comes to issues that comes up with them, um, bringing a, 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 a toy gun or something like that, which is, you know, something that, hey, you know, a plastic toy gun, you know, I play with this at home. They hold them accountable and kick them out of school even. But they, they won't do the same thing when you're talking about some of these suburban kids in, in these suburban areas that, you know, do some things that's uh, reprehensible and, and uh, uh, they won't hold them accountable. Well, I think it's even worse than the, I think it's really, really bad because within your lifetime, I don't think you've seen it like this. I, I really have some issues with this. And you can't change really people you know, it seems like I, I've been this way before, this down this road before. Yeah. Yeah. Violence isn't there. We still see it, but the violence part isn't there. You know, the, the you know what happened to uh, individuals who used to go do sit-ins. You know, the violence yeah. part isn't there. Yeah. But one thing I want to address, though, real quick is in in the story, they said that the students are. That's a common act for the students to do yeah. to the opposing team. It's turned turn their back. back. Yeah. Right. But the someone holding up the Trump sign, that was you know, new. just exacerbated, but, right? But that, that's the way they're going to get away with it because hey, we do we normally do this, right. but we just had Trump signs this time, so right. So well, what? they are addressing it. Poor taste, bad poor sportsmanship, certainly. But the bigger issue is the climate that we now live in, the climate that our kids are now that forced it's to. That's okay. Exactly. It's okay because the president elect. Yeah, yeah. I still think I'm. I'm in a nightmare, and I, I need to wake zone. up. We are. My, my, my question to that would be, what message were you trying to send when you did it and added the Trump sign? So if this is something that you all that, that you always do to opposing teams, why add the Trump sign? What message were you trying to send by adding the, 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 the Trump sign, since this is new? Right, and of course, we already know. It's the whole uh, the quarterback from uh, – San Francisco. I can't think oh, of his name right Colin now. Colin Kaepernick. Right. You know, that whole issue, you know, you saw people true colors based on that issue alone. Yeah. Absolutely. Know. Reading the comments uh, was some of the stuff. <laughs> yeah, I yes. can't read the comments from these, these uh, newspapers. Unbelievable. Now. I saw um, a comedian the other day. I, I guess he's on uh, Saturday Night Live, and I was watching one of his skits, and he was talking about Black Lives Matters and things of that sort. He was like, I don't understand all of the backlash for Black Lives Matter. All they're saying is we matter. That's it, just <laughs> <laughs> not black lives are better, black lives matter. Right. And you get all of this backlash. It, it it really doesn't make sense. Like just we matter. That's it. Not that's a very better. tough argument that I mean discussion to have because I've sat and had these conversations with uh, you know, white individuals and they simply just don't get it. So I've looked people in the eye. They matter. say, well, what, what about me? My well, the problem is they, they don't, don't care to get it, it either. I say, maybe yeah. you should have added Black Lives Matter also. Then maybe they will understand. But because the also is omitted from that word, they simply don't get it. Yeah, and, 
and all the FBGs, Facebook gangsters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, and I, they I, go I, in. When you look at, look at look at what's taking place now, I think it's giving people a false courage um, to think that they are invincible and they can do anything yeah. until someone calls them out. I, I, I've heard numerous instances. I, I had a friend. She said the day after Trump won, she was riding down the street. Guy pulled up on her in Gross Point, blew the horn, gave her the finger, and was like, "Yeah," and drove off. <laughs> Like for no reason. Yeah. You know, I mean, you think about it. Is it okay? There, he's saying, okay, we can, we can do this now because I say anything you want. You, that's yeah. want I want to say. You can say anything that you want to say. And a lot of these companies, like my my um, son works for a company that did not have. I mean, it's a huge company. Not one black in management. Yeah, that's Not good. one black, because a lot of them will hire people who are just like them, uh, relatives, and so forth. My son, just this week, broke down that wall. Oh, good stuff. And he, he's in management. But one in a company that serves school districts and all this stuff, it's ridiculous. And that's crazy in itself just because it's been proven that companies that uh, – are diverse. Feature, yeah, feature diversity are more successful. Yeah. So yeah. we don't care about being successful just as long as we keep the climate the way that we like the climate exactly. to be. But, uh, Daron, you have a daughter. You have kids. I have kids and grandkids. I'm looking at my grandkids. I'm looking at those little ones, those young ones, and saying what kind of world would they be dealing with? Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's a, why we have to fight now. Yeah, you know, my grandson is biracial. Right. Right. And so I, you Three know, of my grandkids right. are... Happy birthday, little Dave. His birthday was yesterday. He turned four. <laughs> that little Dave. Thank you. So, you know, I have to. Oh, yeah. That's right. Awesome. Oh, Lord. So, you know, I have to wonder, you know, what type of, you know, environment that, you know, he's going to have to deal with. Yeah. You know, and, and what's happening is a lot of people don't want to deal with the core issue. So, if you take the Callan Carpenter incident, for, you know, for example, right? Everybody that I had discussions with about it, it was like, well, don't you think he's disrespecting soldiers, this and that? How about you address the reason why he chose this platform to do it instead of which it, the platform that he chose? Then sat up there and said he didn't vote. That's what just cut, undercut the whole thing. We have a call, Darnell. I mean, uh, did you finish what uh, you were yeah, saying? I'm, I'm Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hello. Hi. Come on. Uh, I want to tell you about East Detroit. Well, we're... Um, we're, we're on to the next subject right now. Did you have an okay, experience? Thank you very much. Did you have an experience there? Or? Oh, yes, I did. Very much experience with East Detroit. Oh, wow. Um, I wish you would have called in earlier. Thank you. Um, okay, so what are we telling people? But here's my other, these other two topics that go right now time for black democrats to evaluate the party and african americans in the democratic party do you think that the democratic party has taken advantage of african americans votes yeah i, yeah. I think not just african americans uh, uh um um poor americans too i think they they have they've, it's a, it's a they've, they've practiced they've been practicing a form of elitism for a while now and I believe uh, a lot more, I, I believe a lot of these um, um, structured African Americans in these offices right now, these offices need to be flipped um, into uh, younger hands now. This next generation needs to take over these offices. Uh, oh, gosh, I hated uh, seeing Nancy Pelosi come back. Yeah, and, and you could tell it's, it's a structured system when uh, anytime, um, who is it, um, um, running for DNC chair currently. Oh, um, Ellis. Ellis um, Ellison, Keith Ellison, Ellison. Keith Ellison. And I mean, it's extreme backlash because he's he's a different person. He's a Muslim American that cares about. Uh, he's an African American, young African American guy, Muslim American, and you know he's been prom promoted by um, um, Bernie Sanders and Chuck um, Schumer, and Chuck Schumer, and a couple of other uh, uh, political stalwarts. But they don't want uh, the majority don't want to overturn that power, um, that power structure um, to this African, African American Muslim American. What do you think about him? But anyway, um, so what do you have to say? Because I, Even I believe you. Even on a local you, level, this needs to change. I know. Yeah. You all are Democrats. Yeah. yeah. Um, so am I on the I, down low. I think um, 
the Republicans have been very strategic. And what is happening is Democrats are being reactive instead of proactive. Yeah. I just want to, I think you're so right, because I think the Republicans create the narrative. Yeah. yeah. Where, and they create it for a while. Right. Yeah. Uh -huh. Instead of creating another narrative and pushing for that change. So everything that's happening, especially in the city of Detroit and, and the state of Michigan, is reactive. Mm -hmm. It's reactive. They're trying to pass this law. We're trying to fight it. They're trying to pass this law after that law. <laughs> they, they have a plan A, a plan B, and a plan C. But usually that plan B is going to get you, just like we, we talked about um, what was the proposal. We were talking uh, about the Capitol. 436. Right. Yeah, 436. When, you know, they came, we voted it out, said that we didn't want it. They came right back with a, with a plan so that we could not vote it out again. Right. So right. basically they denied us the right to choose for ourselves and denied our vote, which is illegal. Mm -hmm. But it happened. Uh, and they're continuing to do it. If you it, Even if you look at Flint. You know, yeah, we made this mess, but mm, we'll we'll get to it when we want to. We'll pay for it if we want to. Maybe and you, you can't hold us for accountable it. for yeah. it. In fact, you're going to have to force us to pay for it. And you know what? Nobody's going to get in trouble. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I think Chewett or whatever his name is, I think he's going to run for governor. Well, he's I just, part of it, too. He is really <laughs> a part of it. And now he's trying to act like he's a uh, bad cop. I mean, it's ridiculous. And they also have been pinging on the Democrats because none of their chief of staff are of African American descent. Right. Uh, which is crazy. When we, we, we dominate a great part, a uh, great portion of um, um, representing the Democratic Party, and none of us are chiefs of your staff as uh, a state, uh, as uh, on, on a congressional, U.S. congressional and senatorial level. That's crazy. My biggest problem is it's not what it was designed to be. Those members that are elected by the people work for the people. Supposedly. Supposedly. So no matter if it's Democrat or Republican, they don't work for us. They work for themselves and the agenda. It seems like the they work against us. And they work for themselves and the agenda. They work for the donors. <laughs> when you there have you these big companies coming in and they're giving you money and you need yeah. to be reelected, yeah. that's the agenda. Then, yeah. then, then what yeah. happens yeah. is they say, "This is how I want you to vote." Or you, you can't get rid money. of them; they're exactly. all on your back. So, we have a call. Uh, good morning, Miss Perryman. Gentlemen, how are you? How's it going? Doing yourself. Who am I speaking with? This is Steve. Oh, hey. Uh, first of all, let me give you a happy holiday. Happy holiday. Same Same okay. Uh, Before you here, explode, here's the problem. <laughs> Until the people get Janice Winfrey and Jan Daniel Baxter out of office, yeah. it doesn't matter who you vote for, Republican or Democrat, because your elections have been fixed. I don't care what you say. Mm -hmm. And the thing of it is, until black people, because I'm a black man, get an agenda, we can't do anything. We don't have a, we won't have a seat at the table. We can't hold anybody accountable. We can't even hold a dog catcher accountable because we have no agenda. If I hear another Negro say Obama didn't do anything for us, then I ask that Negro, what did, agenda did you have as a galvanizer? You Absolutely. had the gays had an agenda. You had Mexicans had an agenda. You had immigrants have an agenda. Black folks didn't have an agenda. Therefore, we never will have a seat at the table. And you look at, you look at what the, uh, the state legislator have done to us. Gil Scott had a song saying we almost lost Detroit. And that was about the Fermi nuclear plant. Well, I'll tell you this. PA-436 has done more damage to us than the Fermi nuclear plant. And we've done nothing. You've got a whole town, 100,000 people poisoned, still no fight. But now if you take a brother's chicken plate at a cabaret, he'll fight you. Right. So the thing of it is, our, our, we, we are not enraged, we're not outraged, and the people who continue to oppress and give us austerity, they're walking around here comfortably. And another thing, until black folks understand what it is to be a politician and what moves politicians, which is money, we get nothing. All politicians are for sale, for lease, for to buy. And we ain't any it up. We'll spend more money on a tongue game than we'll do on our politicians. So the thing of it is, until we get the fertilizer, which is money to a politician, we don't get no politicians. You, you look at Brian Banks. Brian Banks fought hard for the people against Detroit public, for Detroit public schools. And then they brought them some trumped-up charges, 
this brother had to sell spaghetti dinners and fried chicken plates and 50 50 raffles to get them out. We don't have any lawyers, all these Negro lawyers, and we don't have any uh, pro bono team to fight on our behalf. We've got a whole bunch of work to do. And it, uh, Trump doesn't scare me, it's the people he's hiring that scare me. Just like Ronald Reagan didn't scare you because he wasn't running the government. He was a figurehead. It was the people underneath him. So we keep repeating history because we don't have an agenda. I agree with you. I, I have to agree with you. As a child of the 60s, a little child, no, but a child of the 60s, we fought. We had an agenda. This is what yeah. we want. This is, we want this, we want this, we want this. People doing a lot of talking, but it's just talking. Well, in the 60s, we called each other brother and sister. We had a little something going on in the 80s when we were doing the Black Medallions, you know, yeah, Public Enemy, X Clan, but we lost it. We, and we lost it because we allow the media to define you. And the first thing in life is, and the first thing a politician is one on one, you never let anyone define you. And you look around as a people, and I'm talking about black people, everyone defines us. That way we don't have any self determination because no one is writing a narrative for us. Everything is given a narrative on us. Yeah. So until we get together and say enough is enough, I, will, I tend to believe black people love oppression. They love austerity. Don't talk about Greece. Don't talk about uh, Somalia. You got ethnic cleansing here in Detroit. He goes from the boulevard to Jefferson. Ain't no more black folks. Any comments, you gentlemen? Hey, you're absolutely right. I, I can't. Uh, and I ask, I'll leave you a question. I'm asking you this question. Where will black people go when the gentrification plan is complete? Okay. Gentrification from in, in, in Detroit. When they, or if you look, you look, if you look from the from the boulevard to the river, that's a gentrification plan. But once it's complete, where do you think he's gonna go? If you got most people living today, black folks living today on some type of government subsidy. And they cut those subsidies. I used to say hell will freeze over when Livonia got Section 8. Well, I guess it's snowing in hell. Right, right, right. Because they're taking us out like the Pied Piper out to the enclaves, and you can't get back. Because if you go out to an enclave and your car breaks down, you don't have a means to get around. I, I well, agree with you, Steve. Okay, Steve, um, I'm going to have them answer that. And we have another call. As usual, your insight was uh, quite good. And, and I agree Thank with you, Steve. Uh, Thank you. And, and I believe Daron just And we'll made go a, to that ne other call in just a moment. Daron just made a great statement about uh, Democrats being a, a reactionary, even African-American uh, Democrats being re more reactionary than proactive. And to your point regarding that, um, gentrification did not have to happen if we were more proactive of what we were going to do with downtown Detroit. Now, unfortunately, what you have right now uh, is more uh, uh, other coming in and taking over um, um, downtown and midtown Detroit, even New Center, and it's about to encroach into other areas now. Um, Created midtown. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're creating, it was things that we could have done decades ago, but we didn't. Now we're reacting to it. Um, saying okay. that, hey, we're, but the question good. Steve had, and I'll get to that other call in just a moment. The question was, what do you do when all the, where do those people go? Because already, you, as you know, people are being are moved out because rents have gone sky high and so forth. Where do those people go? Uh, it's suburbs. Flint. <laughs> the suburb. They're gonna do it just like just like Chicago. Mm -hmm. um, when you look at the neighborhoods and how things have changed in Chicago. They got rid of a lot of the public housing. They saw that it was it, it was prime property, tore down the projects, dispersed people into different neighborhoods, and now they talk about you know the gang problems and all of that stuff. That happened because you took a bunch of people, took them out of their regular right. neighborhood, put them in another neighborhood. So now you have factions warring. Right. Um, Right. Same thing will, will happen here. They're going to they're gonna basically repeat. Yeah. repeat. Uh, I, I, why I, I, we go in this a, circle? It's like a I skin or rat. I think it's a tough <laughs> argument to make. I can see you saying gentrifying downtown, but you have other pockets in Detroit yeah. that, that can um, service the folks that's being shifted out. We um, have another call. Robert, that is, you're absolutely right. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, uh, good morning, Queen. Uh, and good morning to your, to your, to your guest. Got uh, you know, one, one, of our, one of our biggest problems is understand that it, that we won't accept the fact that we we really don't know what's going on. 
And so when you think about power when it comes to politics, politics is, is a real dirty game. And, and and the politics of this world, you know, it's a giant spider web. And everybody that, that gets involved in politics, they get caught up in the web. And it's not going to change. And we, we keep procrastinating and whatnot and what, you know, with what we see that's going on. And it's almost like uh, uh, deja vu or, or retardation or whatever. You know, it's not going to change until we as the masses of people change. It, you know, it ain't for the system to change. It's for black people to change because we got to know the time and what time we're living in, and we don't seem to know or whatever. And those that, that are running and ruling and whatnot, they know the time. And far as when it comes to Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton, these people are all on the same, are, on the, are in the same spider web or whatnot. They're all working together, and they want to stay in power. And by us not knowing the time and who we are, and what we should be doing, understand. Who, who we, said? Who said our people will suffer from lack of knowledge? Oh, the scriptures. The scriptures tell you that, or whatever. Also, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad always said that that our people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge, and that's really what time it is, or whatever. When you, when we get into really finding out what's going on, do you know? Understand the the, the people understand is running running this government have built, understand, underground cities all over the planet. And many of us don't even know this is going on. Do you know, understand, when uh, there were over something like three, some, over $3 trillion that were stolen out of the military budget just before 9-11 happened? Many of us don't even know what happened. But Rumsfeld was talking about finding out. And within two days of him talking about finding out what happened to the trillions of dollars that were stolen out of the military budget, 9-11 happened. And so we don't know what's going on, but black people in America are the people of God, and you got to be able to recognize that God is in the world, and he comes to bring an end to this world or whatever. you got to have somebody that knows scriptures and whatnot well, well, and I... what's going on. And you have a man, but nobody wants to go to, and that's Minister Farrakhan. For some reason, we all avoid talking about him or the Honorable Light Muhammad, and that's the only solution that we have today, sister. Thank you so much. Thank you. You all have a blessed day. You too. Love Robert. you all. But um, like you said, there are other pockets, Robert. There are other pro pockets. I know so many um, white folks who live right in Detroit, different places. Yeah. Yeah. And um, we places that some of us wouldn't live. Which is crazy. Well, right now, they have a plan. Again, there is a plan. To, it comes back to planning. And it's reactionary it's, well, for us, though. Yeah. These guys have been proactive in, in acquiring this land, just like where, where you live. And, uh, uh, Matt, you have so many houses that were foreclosed on, and we could have bought property a uh, decade, well, about a decade ago anyway, uh, but years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, but now we're, you know, as a people in, in Detroit, we're complaining about other folks coming in in these areas and, and taking over. Well, we could have done the same thing. If 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 we develop, uh, and and it goes back to something somewhat like with uh with Steve. Steve, Steve was in. You 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 have to develop a plan. What you want to do, how you're going to do it, and be in it for the long haul. If you look at like Dan Gilbert, he's playing Monopoly in real life. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he 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 mm -hmm. saw he saw emptiness. He came and said, Hey, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. And once I do this, then people are going to come and they're going to do this. And he's creating his own reality. Buying up all of these buildings. Park Place and Boardwalk. Yeah, come, yeah. come on in. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. We're going to do this. This is what I'm going to create, and he's creating it. We don't have the, 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 the money to do that per se, but if you look on a smaller scale, you look at the neighborhoods. I, I, I do um, real estate development. You come in, and, and when the housing market had crashed, it was open season yeah. for investors to come and buy houses and things of that sort, and you have to be willing to, to, to sit it out. You know, it got hard there for a minute. Right. It got very hard. But now, if, if you made an investment, say, 10 years ago in, in a couple of houses, you see that they're, they're coming back. I'm mad at myself. I, I sold my house um, for $125,000. And I look, and three years later, it's two hundred and fifty thousand mm -hmm. right. dollars, and yeah, you but know. sometimes we have to react to what we need at the time. Mm -hmm. And by the way, two weeks from now, a black man who is running for governor is going to be on my show. So, you heard governor that of here, Michigan? governor of Michigan. Mm -hmm. He's going to be on my show, 
and so I want I'm I'm kind of excited about it because he's he can talk he ha- he has a plan. You, you know, what really ticked me off. I came here back here. I'm from I'm originally the Detroiter, uh, but I came back here for law school in 2010. Uh, I was looking down in the downtown area, and you saw those townhouses on Woodward, uh, right across the street where they're building uh, the arena currently. Yes. And those things were running for like thirty to fifty thousand dollars. Yes. And I'm like, man, this is a steal. I was going to take some of my law school loan money and and buy one. I'm like, this is crazy. Instead of renting, I, I didn't do it. But uh, uh, how much but are they selling they, for now? Three hundred. Three hundred. <laughs> And this, the, the arena isn't even lit yet. Br- the Brush Park development right but there. But you can so see it was going to happen. On behalf of, of you you can see this stuff was about to happen, but, you know, people didn't take advantage of it. Now we're reactionary once again right. saying that, hey, you know, they're taking all this property. Man, we had this stuff for years that we could have taken. Absolutely. They're not, they're not well, taking what you're giving away. Mm-hmm. Oh, we have a quick call. We only have less than a minute. Um, good morning. Hello? This is Steve again. A quick, a quick uh, hey, statistic. <laughs> Black folks have the money. In 2015, quickly state Steve. lottery, state lottery statistics. We spent in Detroit three over 326 million dollars on the lottery. Zip code 48205, which was deemed by the FBI to be high crime, low education, high drugs, low un- uh, high unemployment. They spent $15.6 million on the lottery, which averages out to over $250,000 a week, over $2 million a month. So we are almost close to $2 million my time, a month. My so time we is have up. the money. My we time. just don't have an agenda. Yeah. I, I agree thank with you. you, too. And we got to go. Steve. Thank you, Steve. I, I agree with you okay. because all of, all of, look at the number of Thanks, millionaires that uh, uh, Coleman Young had, had okay. made during his era. Everybody, we'll see go? you next week. Like, where'd they go? Thanks, gentlemen.